Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and now we get to the main reason why I wanted to revisit the Ghoulies films, but I figured I'd talk about the other ones again, for why not. Ghoulies 2. To me, easily the best of the Ghoulies films. I know that's not saying much, but Ghoulies 2, to me, is what the first one should have been. It's Ghoulies, and a, to me, an interesting location, fucking things up straightforward to the point even though this, this film is like 10 minutes longer than the first it feels faster paced than the first film the first film isn't even really about ghoulies it's about this fucking asshole who inherits a house and is obsessed with black magic and wants to finger black magic up his fucking tight ass ghoulies 2 is actually about ghoulies so holy shit I like Ghoulies too. That was the one I saw the most when I was a kid. Still enjoy it to this day. It's nothing... Like, for example, if I compare it to other films, I would put Watchers 1 and 2 above Ghoulies 2. I would put, say, Choppy Mall above Ghoulies 2. I would put... You know, Elm Street films, Friday the 13th films. I'd put Waxwork 1 and 2 over Ghoulies 2. I would put... Critters 1 and 2 above Ghoulies 2. <clears throat> but I still think it's a fun little creature feature. Drawbacks, I wish they went for the R rating. On IMDb, it says it's rated R. I mean, this says it's PG-13 right there. And I believe it. That's PG-13. It, there's even a few deleted scenes, like little extensions of violence, which granted it's not much, but it's a little bit that they cut down for PG-13. Grant, I don't know why they didn't just put them back into the film, but at least they're there to watch. But I wish they went full out on an R-rated instead of making PG- but I guess they wanted to try to do a Gremlins formula, because those were not rated R either. Were Critters 1 and 2? I don't even know if Critters 1 and 2 were rated R. I don't remember. <clears throat> But the reason I like Ghoulies 2 is a number of things. I do like the music. Granted, I think they borrow a lot from the film Ghost Town, which I believe came out the same year. But I still really like the, the music. <laughs> Granted, it might be all stolen from Ghost Town. I can't remember, but I still like it, whether the opening credits music or even the sort of softer pieces of music, I definitely think is a better score than the score to the first film. I thought the Ghoulies looked a little bit better, they looked a little bit more refined, and they were the actual villains. It wasn't talking about black magic and all over the place. <clears throat> the Ghoulies were the villains wrecking this amusement park, this carnival. Which is another thing I like, because there's not too many horror films that take place at a carnival, at a amusement park and pretty much the ghoulies hitch a ride and they're in this place called Satan's Den which is sort of the spook house house of horrors portion of this carnival and you have this nephew who I swear to God is a spitting image of fucking Johnny Depp this guy Damon Martin he looks like fucking Johnny Depp he could be Johnny Depp's brother and weirdly enough, I think he was on 21 Jump Street, which Johnny Depp was on, at least in a few. I, that's why I remember reading somewhere. But I'm like, holy shit, Damon Martin, he, if you see the film, imagine an 80s Johnny Depp. He kind of acts like Johnny Depp, like Johnny Depp did in the 80s. I swear to God, it's like, we can't get Johnny Depp, but this guy is almost a spinning image of Johnny Depp. So th let's get his almost twin. Damon Martin, who's the nephew, the lead of the film. You have his uncle, who used to be a magician, but now he's sort of a drunk, played by Royal Dano. And I've seen him in quite a few films of this. He was in Killer Clones from Outer Space. He had a bit role. I think it was like him and his dog, who find the clowns. He's one of the first to die. That's a good film, Killer Clones from Outer Space. You have... He was also in House 2, I believe. House 2, the second story. I think he was the dead relative that comes back and has the caterpillar dog. I think that's Royal Dono as well. 
he's a good character actor. I like him in the film. Um, there's also another guy with him, a little person, little person played by Phil. God, what was his name? Fondacaro. I think it's Phil Fondacaro. Yeah, Phil Fondacaro. He was a little person. He was in Troll. He's the only decent thing in Troll One because he was actually trying to give a performance. And he was in a bit in Willow. He was. I remember reading somewhere that he was the Ewok in Return of the Jedi, the one that dies. Like, actually has a little death scene. I could be wrong, but because Wikipedia doesn't mean it's all truthful. But Phil Fondacaro, I liked him. I mean, he's a little person, but he was. He's not just used for, oh, but there's a little person that's it. He actually had a little bit of a character. He was a guy who was much, who thought of himself as an actor, who knew Shakespeare, uh, but he wasn't annoying about it. But he, 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 you could tell he wanted to do more stuff than just be here. But I, I thought he was a good actor. The female lead, Terry Ramson. Who was actually in Pumpkinhead? I believe she was the woman that when Pumpkinhead grabs her and puts the cross on her forehead. That's Carrie Ramson. And I, honestly, I thought she did a well. She had more for her character to do here in Pumpkinhead. She just there to die and get her Pumpkinhead the claw cross on her forehead. Here, she actually had a bit of a character. Uh, I thought she did a good job in one scene where she's telling the story about how. She used to be a trapeze artist with her brother, and her brother ended up missing the net. And I thought she sold that scene pretty well. I thought she did a decent job. So I like the cast of the film. Like I was saying before, not many flits take place in a carnival, an amusement park, in a horror film. I mean, for you have the ending of Child's Play 3. Trying to think. That shitty scene in Texas Chainsaw 3D. Which held the ghoulies did more at a carnival in this movie than Leatherface did in Texas Chainsaw 3 Dicks. And that's sad, but it's true. I'm trying to think of like horror films that took place entirely in a carnival amusement park. I mean, I know there's. I think one called Funhouse Massacre, which someone sent me the DVD for. And I did watch it. I didn't really care for it. I mean, it's cool the person sent it to me, but I just didn't care for the film. But there's not many. And it's a pretty... Well, Howling Six, The Freaks, there was a carnival that went into town. And then what was that Disney film, a carnival went into town? Was it... Something that's wicked comes, or it was, or it was another one. I, I once think it's another one. I can't remember, but not many is what I'm saying. Not many, and I like the location. I like the idea. It was at an amusement park. I think they built that in Rome in an inside stage, and I think this is when it was still Empire releasing it, not Full Moon. Even as a kid, I remember the way this film opens, where Royal Donald's looking at the full moon, he's like, oh, that's a magic moon. And I always wondered if that shot is how full moon pictures got started, because the full moon, because it's the opening credits against a full moon. And I'm like, is that how, you know, Charles Band got the idea to have full moon be that? Maybe not. I guess that's. And by the way, I didn't even mention Albert Band. Charles Band's dad directed this. I thought he did a decent enough job. There's some funny, goofy stuff. I mean, for example, after the setup with the nephew and the uncle and the opening credits, which I like the music in that. Again, I think it's from Ghost Town, which is another good 80s film, but. I still like it. For some reason, this priest has these three guys in red robes following him. 
you know, he goes into this auto shop, and for some reason, there's a gigantic barrel of bubbling toxic solvent that just, it's the middle of the night, probably like midnight, it's, no one's fucking there, the place is closed down, but for some reason, this big bubbling, no lid, fucking toxic solvent is right in the middle of an auto shop. I'm like... <laughs> Is that typical for an auto shop? So sometimes you get stuff like that. What? <laughs> and the, I'm guessing he's a priest. Drops him, drops them in the sack, puts him in. Doesn't work. A bat like Dooley comes in, knocks the guy into it. He becomes a bag of bones, and the Dooleys come out, and they hitch a ride on the truck and I think there's some nice stop animation there when they're walking into the semi and hiding to the back of the truck and that's when we're introduced to the other characters Phil Fondacaro as Sir Nigel the I think Jay Downing is the name of the bad guy who's sort of this uptight asshole who comes in and says okay my company is running this carnival if you don't make a lot of money, you're fucking fired. What was there? Carrie Ramson, Remsen is Nicole, who right now is doing the stage with these women who dance and barely have clothes on, which I am for that. And the nephew is wondering what to do because his uncles are drunk, and he's like, oh, but you could do your magic show. And he's like, uh, he's been gone for 20 years and pretty much the carnival starts and the ghoulies have gone into the carnival show of Satan's Den this spook show House of Horrors and two kids go in and a group of teenagers including two people are recognized first off the two kids one of them is interviewed on the features and the kid that throws the ninja star, which the ghoulie bites, the older kid, he actually grew up to, I guess, head a martial arts studio, which that's pretty interesting. But yeah, Ghoulie grabs the ninja star and eats it. But then the group of guys, two people are recognized. One is Sasha Jensen. That's a guy who played Brady in Halloween 4. If you don't know, that's sort of the guy who is the sort of boyfriend of Ellie Cornell. Um, he's a guy that tries to beat up Michael Myers, then Michael Myers grab him and sort of crushes his head in Halloween 4. Also, one of the other guys is Bill Butler. And the other people leave him. Bill Butler alone, and then ultimately Bill Butler dies because the ghoulies get him and put him on a pendulum. And one of the deleted scenes, that scene went further. You actually saw the pendulum go into his stomach. Like, imagine this is his stomach. You see the, it actually go in like this, and there's blood, and there's a cut, and it, it's opened up. But I guess, you know, they, and the footage looks good. And you can hear music underneath. So it's like they could have just put that into the film. I don't know why they did not put that with the film. I mean, if you're watching Ghoulies 2, I think you'd be fine with them putting in the teeny bits of gore. I mean, Grant, it's not fucking breathtaking gore, holy shit, but like teeny tiny bits amount. The others is like the Ghoulies are biting people a bit longer. There's a scene where the clown that gets dunked. Which, as a kid, that was kind of a creepy bit where the clown pops out of the water and his arm's gone. There was an extra shot where you saw the arm uh, lying in the water. And then when the woman who gets knocked off the bumper car, when she a ghoulie runs her over with another bumper car, you see an extra shot of her dead and bleeding on the bumper car floor. Like little bits that, I guess, so that you have a PG-13, they cut them out. Which, these should be rated R. Come on now. It's bullshit. 
If, if people tell me they're rated R, I mean, it says right here PG-13, unless this is wrong. Could be, but... If it's rated, if Ghoulies 2 is rated R, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like it should be PG-13. Which is one of, one of my few problems with it. But, uh... Yeah, where the hell was I going with that? Oh yeah, Bill Butler, he gets killed. And Bill Butler is one of those guys, if you don't know who that is, he's been killed a lot. He got killed by a ghoulie in this movie. He got killed by Jason the year after. No, maybe not the year after, because this was 88. But pretty soon he got killed by Jason in Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. So I guess the same year he did. And Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood, he's a guy who, he's one of the first people to die. Jason throws that thing, and he gets hit in the back, and Jason stands him up, holding the thing in the guy's back. That's Bill Butler. Then he got killed by Leatherface in Chainsaw Massacre 3. He was the lead with Kate Hodge, and then he gets killed because he's hung upside down. They put, like, this hammer, and it hits him in the head. He got killed in Night of Living Dead, the remake. By his own stupidity, because he shot at a gas tank. Because, oh, there's a lock right by this gas tank. I'm going to shoot it. Boom! <laughs> so he died from stupidity in that movie. Not from the zombies. So he got killed from Ghoulies, Leatherface, Jason, his stupidity, and a Watcher. And Watchers Reborn. He was in Watchers 4, Watchers Reborn. He got killed. Not by the creature, actually, but he got the NSA guy shot him. And his girlfriend. So, yeah, he just killed a lot in movies. <laughs> but, yeah, Bill Bella got killed by a bully, Jason, and Leatherface, among others. Uh, but also, like, Sacha Jensen and his girlfriend, they're kissing, they get puked on by the ghoulies, and they're stuck there. There's another guy whose hand got cut, and his girlfriend takes him out of there. And he says, oh, I'm going to sue you guys. Oh, yeah, Bill Butler, I got to mention this one dialogue. I love the delivery where one of his buddies, uh, Stereo, had gotten knocked to the ground. And Bill Butler sees it. He's like, dude, your tunes. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. It's just, I don't know why. It just, it just makes me laugh my ass off. Dude. Your tunes. <laughs> but yeah, he, again, quickly after that gets killed. But not, you know, Sasha Jensen doesn't die in this. He does in Halloween 4, but not in this. And the ghoulies actually take Bill Butler's body and wrap him up, wrap him up like a mummy and hide him in this standing up coffin. And now the Satan's Den is becoming popular because the crowd thinks this is part of the show. And they keep buying tickets to see these ghoulies who they think are rats and bats or electronic or remote control stuff or whatever. And then as this is going on, well, Donald finds out what's going on and he tries to stop him and gets this book of magic he had from back in the day and tries to read the incanta incantation to let him get the fuck out of Dodge. He gets bitten, someone throws a knife, it hits him in the chest, but there's a deck of cards. He thinks he's okay, but they fry him. And then pretty much other people find out about the ghoulies. And amongst that, a little bit of love story between the lead and the girl. And again, I thought Nicole character, I keep forgetting her name, Carrie Ram Remsen. I thought she did fine in the little drama role, drama scene she had, talking about her brother's death. I thought she did fine. And I like the music in that scene as well. Um, and it says on IMDb that there was another ending, but then it was rewritten to the ending we have now. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's BS. If that's true, I would love. I'd be interested to see what the original ending was <coughs> planned. And you know, unless that's BS. Yes, yeah, the original ending was rewritten on set. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's BS. I have no idea. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> pretty much as things are going up Shit Creek, the lead guy did some of the other carnival guys to help him out, and you know the lead guy Johnny Depp's twin gets the shit bidden out of him, and the asshole. Well, he's an uptight asshole, shoots the shotgun, and now the ghoulies are set free to terrorize the carnival, terrorize the amusement park. Which I'm like, I thought that was cool. And they do kill people. They bite the clown that gets done, bit his arm off. He's fucking dead from that. These two people are on this sort of octopus tilt the world type of thing. I don't know, some call it the spider or the octopus is a tilt the world. One really unscrews in, they fly off and die. This poor woman gets knocked off of her bumper car and gets run over by a ghoulie and another bumper car. Of course, way earlier in the film, a woman died. Um, that was like pretty much the. Well, other than the priest at the beginning of the film, at the carnival, the first death is this woman looking for a cat, and they take a straight razor and kill her and bite the shit out of her. Uh, the asshole gets his comeuppance. He, gets, he hides in the bathroom, and there's a ghoulie in the toilet, and you hear about how he... The ghoulie gives him a new asshole. A lot of munching. Uh, the bald ghoulie does. So it gives him one hell of a rim job. And the guy doesn't like it and screams and dies from it. And they try out these weapons. Nothing's working. So Phil Fondercar is like, why don't we try magic? And they do, uh, do this nice little bit where then the cold character to have a little bit of an arc. A teeny tiny bit. Where the back creature takes the book, puts it up in the carousel, and before she didn't want to do high wire stuff because of her brother's death, but now she goes up there to get it. She just the, has more to do here than she did in Pumpkinhead. That's just the thing. But yes, I would say I like Pumpkinhead more than this. But I still have fun with it. It's a hell of a lot better than the first one. People say that sequels can't be better than the first one. Ghoulies 2 is a prime example of that because it's more straightforward. It's telling a more, I would say, a more straightforward, not run around bullshit story. Here's a carnival. Ghoulies are hiding in there. They're killing people. They terrorize a carnival. They're fucking people up. They're killing people. We gotta stop them. Not this, oh, he's some asshole. He needs black magic. And pretty much they conjure up this big ass demon to eat up the other ghoulies. Not sure if it's a picture. Oh, this guy here. Here's the little pictures. This guy here. And he eats pretty much all the ghoulies, except one when you pay attention. Because he. You know, one of those things that you hit and the bell goes to the top. He smashes one with that and eats it. One's high in the popcorn, he eats that. It catches the bat and eats that. Um, there's some fun stuff where this ghoulie at the bottom here was trying to shoot a rifle at the other ghoulie at one of those shooting ranges. And I thought for a low-budget film, the creature effects were pretty decent. Oh, I liked them. But you do notice they he does not eat this one, the bald one, which was the one in the toilet. And even when you're watching, you're like, wait a minute, where's that one? And then when the movie ends, you hear laughing from where the toilet was. And, and then I'm thinking, did anyone ever find that asshole's body? Is his body still there? Or did he get completely eaten... 
by this ghoulie. Made, <laughs> the rest of it got flushed down the toilet by the ghoulie. But I mean, yeah, the finale, they, after he eats most of them, they get chased by into Phil Von der Tarle's trailer. They build a Molotov cocktail. Bon appetit, motherfucker. Make him eat it, and he blows up, and pretty much a happy ending. And the ghoulie, I just finish off eating the asshole in the bathroom, and it ends with a, a fun song. Scream until you like it from a band called Wasp. Scream until you like it. Scream until you like it. It's a fun sequel. It's easily the best of the Ghoulies films. Is the which again I know it's not saying much. It definitely proves that a sequel didn't be better than the original. It's more straightforward. It's more fun. It's not as boring. I like the characters more. I like the acting a bit more. I thought the Ghoulies looked a little bit more. A little bit more finesse compared to the first one. They had more to do because they were the actual villains, not, oh, they're in it for five minutes. It's more about some fucking guy in a cloak coming back from the grave and stupid witchcraft sh bullshit. I like the store more than the first one. Great, it might be stolen from another movie, but still, I liked it more. It's nice seeing some recognizable faces like Bill Butler and. And Phil Fondacaro and Johnny Depp's twin and Royal Dano, Sasha Jensen from Halloween 4. I like the setting in the carnival and amusement park. I, again, that's kind of not the most typical setting, which I like. Overall, I don't think it's that bad of a movie. I think it's a pretty damn decent flick. Ghoulies too. I enjoy this film. I think it's a good one. So either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we will see you later. Bye-bye.